Okay, I'm muting you. If I if I can hear you, then we're muting you. So all of you, please look down at your phones and go ahead and mute yourself. I see, is this Bishop Art Hodges there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, awesome. Okay, well, we are live on Facebook. That's very exciting. So I want to say hello to everybody and thank you for joining us. Let's see if I can make this work here. Back to gallery view, uh, speaker view. Okay, so hopefully you can see me live. Can you, or, or large, can you see me large when I speak? Yes, no, you can't? Yes. You can, okay. All right, well, I have it in, um, in large view. So when the speaker speaks, then you at least get to see them. I wanna thank you all for joining us again for our session six in Ask the Experts. And we're gonna take a break after this one for one week. And then we're gonna come back with some amazing uh, subjects, which is if you're a working parent or you're a single parent, how do you actually get it done? And some of the best online resources. So I wanna just thank you again for all for joining us. And we have an exciting lineup. This subject today is our testimonials from, from uh, parents and from educators who have actually homeschooled. And I am one of them, but I'm going to defer to some of our experts today. If you have any questions, please look at the chat box down below and go ahead and enter your, your questions in there. We'll get to you. But if you hit that little button that says, raise your hand, if you can find that at the bottom, then we'll actually let you ask that question uh, live to our experts. And so with that, we are going to open up in prayer. And since Bishop Art Hodges has joined us today, we'll defer to him to open us in prayer. Bishop Art. Certainly. Lord God, we thank you for this wonderful day, for being our creator. We thank you, God, that you are our source of all of our resource. And we thank you, Lord, that you operate in the realm of the supernatural, that what is impossible with man is absolutely possible with you. And we're asking now for that divine help, Christ, as we try to save a generation to turn America back to you. I'm asking your blessing on this meeting that the ideas shared will be from not only experience, but wisdom from heaven, Christ, because truly we know all education starts with the fear of the Lord. That's the beginning of all knowledge. We ask your blessing on this session together. In Jesus' name, we give you all praise and glory. Amen and amen. Amen and amen is right. All right. Well, we have people still coming into the room. Let me pull up the chat box and the participants list because somehow or another my screen decided to do weird things. Uh, Gail, are you able to admit everybody? Admit all? Um, I don't want to try to have to do that too. Um, all right, so now are we back in to the little screens? Is that what you're seeing, the little screens? Okay, let's go around and introduce our speakers and they'll have one minute to introduce who they are. And we are going to start with Diane Davis. I think you have to unmute okay, yourself. There. I'm Dr. Diane Davis. I am the Dean of Alathea Christian College. I have homeschooled for one year, had a Christian school for 12 years, oh, more than that. And now I work at Alathea Christian College with the one room school method. We're starting one room schools all over the nation. Thank you. You're muted, Dran. Unmute. Okay, thank you. Not a perfect science. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I would like to introduce uh, our new speaker. I'm so excited about him joining us today. Uh, he'll tell you a little bit more about himself and his resources that are available all fuller a little later on. But for now, Israel Wayne. Yeah, I have a little bit different perspective because I actually grew up, grew up being homeschooled as a student. My mother was one of the founding pioneers of the homeschooling movement. She started homeschooling my older sister in 1978, so that was over 40 years ago. Uh, she also started publishing a national homeschooling magazine 
1988. It became one of the nation's longest running homeschool periodicals. So she was an author and conference speaker back in the 80s and 90s and 2000s on, on homeschooling. I actually um, started working as uh, marketing director for her publication in 1993. Started speaking at homeschooling conferences in 1995. I uh, wrote my first homeschooling book in 2000. My wife was also homeschooled. Her family started homeschooling in 1983. We live in Southwest Michigan. We have 10 children, ages 20 down to 18. And we have always homeschooled all of our children. Uh, and then I also work on a lot of other levels too. I'm vice president of the Michigan State Homeschool Association and have been advisory counselor for the National Alliance of Christian Home Education Leadership and a lot of other things. But I'm, I'm pretty entrenched in the homeschooling movement. Uh, and I'm somewhere between chronically and terminally homeschooled, I think. Awesome, well, that sounds exciting. We're so happy that you're here. That's exciting to, to have someone who's actually been homeschooled and is doing it themselves. So we have a lot to learn from you and we really appreciate you being here. Okay, so let's see, uh, Donna Train. All right, I think I'm unmuted. Can you hear me? Yes. I'm Donna Train. I've homeschooled just one child because I sacrificed my first child to the public school system. Um, worked full time, both my husband and I, throughout that time. And uh, God did amazing things in bringing not only myself into the realm of homeschooling, but establishing the uh, heart of schooling ourselves. So I went back to school when I started homeschooling my son and he's a lifelong learner. Awesome, thank you so much. All right, has Ray Moore joined us? Okay, not yet. And how about Alex? Yeah, I'm here. You are, okay, Ray. Okay, go for it, Ray. Yeah, I'm E. Ray Moore and I'm a early homeschooler. Uh, we started at oldest son in 1977. We homeschooled four children up through the seventh or eighth grade. Then we tended to put them in a private Christian school at that time. And we have eight grandchildren now and four adult children. And the uh, grandchildren were homeschooled for a good bit, but then now their mothers are teaching <laughs> at a Christian school. So they had to enroll them. So we've had a long history with this movement and uh, we've seen it grow and we're living in kind of a magic moment right now. And uh, we're gonna take advantage of the, of the time because this is Jesus said in John 9, 4, work while it is today for the night comes where no man can work. Thank you, Ray. And he is the chairman of the uh, public school exit, uh, chairman of the board. All right, Max Lyons is also someone who we we had hoped to be here last week when we were talking about curriculum, but he's here this week, and so he'll be able to give us an overview. Max Lyons. Hi, everybody. I'm Max Lyons. I'm the Director of Teaching Services at the Foundation for American Christian Education. Been here for seven years in this position, 38 years in Christian schools, including 19 years at Stonebridge School uh, as an administrator. My wife and I taught our four children over 25 years using the principal approach methodology that we advocate here at FACE. And um, just uh, at this moment, FACE is doing all we can to uh, help home educators, uh, help those in schools, help with starting schools. Uh, just trained 150 teachers a couple weeks ago here at FACE. Some, online. We've got an international ministry, so working with uh, folks in Brazil and, and uh, Colombia and, and um, Uganda and Australia, kind of all, all over the world. So uh, uh, happy to be a part of the movement right now, and there's, there's enough work for us all to do, but uh, I'm glad to see, see us all in the work together. We all got a, a piece, of, piece of the action here, and I think it's a God moment that we can really um, capitalize on a lot of people interested in both homeschooling and Christian education that, that weren't previously. Some of them kind of, it wasn't their choice, but uh, so uh, 
Thanks. Thanks for being with us in, in this effort. I love being part of the team. Well, we sure love having you, Max. We're so glad to that you've connected with us at the Zoom meeting. Uh, I have to say that I've learned so much from this organization through Ray Moore, through Max Lyons, through Israel, that there's, there's one layer deeper and that is the principal approach, which is what he, uh, which, which is what we, we think is really the best educational system of all. Uh, and from what I have understood from Max Lyons is, and, and through the group is that basically you start your kids right off reading and writing. You don't do fill in the blank books. You don't spend time dumbing your kids down. You get them to think critically right away. That is the way all of our founding fathers learned. I mean, they didn't have formal education and they weren't put into a school where they were common denominators to the way they learn. They were allowed to learn at their level. And as a matter of fact, these, these folks, it seemed like they had college educations by the time they were 16 because they had read so many books. Their vocabulary was outstanding. Their writing ability was amazing and they did all this before they were 15 16 years old and look at what we've done to our kids now so i think homeschooling and learning about the way to turn this whole system around is the only way to go if we want america to survive so max i i really do appreciate all the work that you've done there and, and truly ray and i know israel you've done amazing things i'm personally just grateful to be here did tina Griffin, make it to the phone. Tina. Okay, well, she was <laughs> going to be our resident superstar. I'm, I'm here. You are. Can Praise, you hear me? Yes. Praise God. Thank All you. Right. There I am. Yahoo, look at you, you cute pie. <laughs> oh, yeah. I threw a hat on. To just keep me in prayer today. I had four social media people that couldn't take on my load because they have 12 other clients, and my main assistant resigned last night. Oh, good. Don't, it, isn't that something? But it's a God thing because um, I talked to someone this morning for two hours. So I literally threw a hat. I think she's her hair replacement. I really do. And she's on fire and it's the subject matter. I know that it's going to happen because of what I talk about. But anyway, I have a, I ha God's lining it up and it's all working well. So thank you for letting me jump on the call. Well, I'm so glad you're here. And have you been here from the more or less the beginning? Yes, I have, believe it or not. <laughs> okay, praise God. Uh, all right, well, now we're going to get down to business for everyone on the phone, and we are uh, live streaming. So we're, there's a lot of people out there that want to hear from all of you. So Alex, are you here with us yet, by the way? Alex Newman. Okay, well, we'll get him when he comes in. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to start first with Ray Moore. And Ray, you are going to talk about pioneers in homeschooling. Okay. <clears throat> a minute. Um, and by I, the way, can I just throw one more thing out to everybody? If you're not speaking, and especially our speakers, go ahead and mute yourself so I don't have to. Go All ahead. right. Am I, people can hear me, right? Okay. Yes, yeah, we were indeed pioneers. Uh, before the pioneers, we started in 77. Didn't know another homeschool family for four or five years. It was pretty daunting in those days, and a lot of our friends uh, thought we had flipped out. And honestly, we weren't sure ourselves that we hadn't flipped out, but we did it one year at a time, and right away we knew we had discovered something incomprehensibly wonderful for our children and for the family. So we kept it up. We homeschooled four children, um, and we, <clears throat> we had a schoolroom in the house, um, they, they, we actually had a separate room where they would go and do their work. Gail would instruct them. She did 80% of it. I did Bible and history. And then she taught them to read. And it's a wonderful thing uh, for a mother, and, and most of you have never thought about this, our father, to teach their children to read. You can close your eyes and go back and see your first and second grade teacher today. If you're 76 years old, I can close my eye and I can see my first and second grade teacher was in a public school, but the one who taught me to read. And so when a mother or father teaches their little child to read, you create a, a double bonding in the family. Um, 
I mean, not that you should need it, but it creates an endearment. Uh, you always love the person who taught you to read. So that was one thing that we discovered very early uh, in our pioneer experience. There weren't many books <clears> or <throat> things to read in those days. And we came across one book it's called Sketches of Jewish Social Life. And I actually have it maybe on a break. I can get it and hold it up in another room. But it was a book looking at the Jewish and Christian community in the times of Christ when he was a child. And apparently homeschooling was the model for the synagogues. And we thought, well, if Jesus was homeschooled, maybe we could do it. So we had to you know, look around. We had to create our own curriculum. Uh, we did use a Becca and Bob Jones, but we had to get the books from a Christian school when they were discarded and got new books. Uh, Bob Jones and a Becca weren't initially willing to sell to us because they saw homeschooling. What, what is that? It was so weird and different, but after a few years of pestering them, they finally relented and they so sold the books uh, directly to us. So finding a good curriculum <clears throat> is a very important step. And we've talked about this. It's, it seems to be an extremely important step when you're getting started. And it is important to have a good curriculum, a Christian curriculum. But after a time, you may find yourself experimenting and not bound by any one thing, even though I am also, along with Adran, a hearty supporter of the principal approach. And I might add that we use their books. We found those books early in our homeschool experience and we use the big red books to teach our children history and the constitution and America's Christian history. So uh, it, it's, uh, it, it's actually a, a good testimony. Our children have, are now 49, 43, 41, and 38. They're all walking with the Lord. They have married well. They have good Christian spouses. And uh, they're raising our eight grandchildren in the church and in the ways of the Lord. And uh, at 76, uh, I can really say like John in the third epistle of John, he said, I have no greater joy than that my children walk in truth. So you're young now, you may just be getting started, but let me tell you, when you get old, you don't want to go to your grave, and I'm not ready there to go there yet, sorrowing over wayward children that you didn't raise in the church and in the ways of the Lord. So that's a quick overview of our life. Uh, we homeschooled about 30 years uh, and you know, off and on, uh, or had them in private Christian schools. So we, our family was formed our children through homeschooling <clears throat> and private Christian schools. I hope I didn't take too long on that. Well, that was wonderful. Thank you, Ray. I would like to go to Israel Wayne now because this whole idea of managing 10 kids uh, kind of blew my mind. <laughs> I watched TV, the 19 kids and counting and other things like that. I just don't know how they did that. So tell us all how it works. Well, it's ironic that uh, homeschooling 10 children is not as uh, difficult as what a lot of people think that it is. And the reason for that is that God doesn't just drop 10 children into your home all at once. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually know that the hardest season for us as parents was when we had a six-year-old, a four-year-old, a two-year-old, and a baby. We were maxed out. That was, that was critical mass for us. That was, that was tipping point. And what was interesting was when we had five children, it actually started to get easier. And so it is way, way easier for us now as parents of 10 children uh, than it was uh, for us having four young ones. You know, I think when that's just the most difficult stage because you're completely outnumbered and those little ones are not contributors. Uh, they create chaos and they, they demand uh, full-time attention but as the children get older and they're able to take care of themselves and then to be able to uh, contribute in some way, you know, whether that's just folding laundry or emptying the dishwasher or whatever, um, you find that, that the, the balance starts to tip and it becomes easier. So like right now, um, we have a 20 year old, we have four teenagers, uh, we have a couple tweeners. And so now we're like totally winning at life. 
um, because you know, we, we have all this help. So I sometimes tell these moms who have say three little ones at home and they feel overwhelmed and just think, Oh yeah, I can't picture having another child. I say, well, what if, you know, what if you had four teenagers or three teenagers who went to your house every day and were willing to help you homeschool the younger ones to help with the chores, to be able to watch them. So you could, you know, run to the grocery store for a minute if you had to. And, and, and you knew that the, these young people were trustworthy because you had trained them, you know, their whole lives and, and they had your DNA. Uh, would, would that be helpful for you? You know, if you had two or three, four children, children, older children that could help uh, be responsible and, and help lift the burden on that front. And they go, wow, that's just amazing. I can't even fathom what that would look like. And I say, well, that's kind of what, what our life is like now. So, um, so, so I think that that concept that people have usually when they feel very overwhelmed, they think of, of having, you know, three little ones and then multiplying that by, by three and a third. And uh, it, it doesn't work out that way. Um, but the other thing that we do that makes it helpful is that we teach some of them, some of the subjects we actually teach as classes with bunches um, where we teach in groups. So history and science are a couple that we do that where we'll take say three students or four students or sometimes even five depending on the, the levels and we will um, read aloud for history and then they'll each have workbooks that are kind of at their own development level. But um, we we try to teach those as classes. So that helps a little bit. Um, I'm actually teaching this year three classes myself for, for our high schoolers. I'm teaching economics, um, ap Christian apologetics, and logic. So I'm, as a dad, teaching those three subjects this year, which is really fun, and I'm enjoying that. So it's a blast. It's a real uh, privilege. It's an honor. It's a blessing to, for us to be able to teach our own children. I want to ask you about that now are you a, a, a professor in economics or are you getting the teacher's manual how's that working out well um as a homeschool student you know i had uh as um one of the, the speakers earlier mentioned about her students being lifelong learners um i i was raised to become a lifelong lifelong learner and so i've continued to study throughout my entire adult life and so i'm not credentialed in those particular subjects uh, but I have studied them exhaustively and extensively. Uh, so I feel very confident in teaching um, all of those subjects. Plus, um, with the curriculum, there are teacher guides. And so that makes it so that anyone, whether they've studied it or not, uh, can learn along with their student. I think that's important, too, that you, uh, you have to fill in the gaps of your own education in most cases. At least that's what most people with public school tell me is that they, they had huge gaps, especially when it relates to Christian worldview. You know, you start studying things like American Constitution or free market economics or Christian apologetics, defending the Christian faith. You know, those are not things, even logic, that you're taught in most government schools. And so, you know, you have to learn that yourself. And homeschooling is a great way to do that. You can uh, be a student along with your students. And as long as you have a teacher guide, that, that really helps you. Um, well, one thing that encouraged me years and years ago, that I think this was even before I had children, uh, related to homeschooling was I talked to a public school teacher who taught math and uh, I just asked him, I said something like, so you must have been really good at math as a student or you really liked math or if you're to be a math teacher. He said, no, not really. It's just a job. I said, oh, really? Uh, I said, so, but, but you know a lot about math. And he said, no, not really. He said, I've forgotten almost everything I studied. He said, basically, my goal is I just try to stay about four days ahead of my students I go through the teacher's guides and I stay about four days ahead of my students. And as long as I'm four days ahead, it, it all works out. And that stuck in my mind. And I thought, you know, if a public school teacher can say that and admit to that, um, really, then that should, should give us as homeschoolers a lot of comfort and that we don't have to be experts in all of these fields. I mean, this guy's admitting he's not, uh, and he makes a living at it. He gets paid to do it for a living. He's just trying to stay four days ahead of them with a teacher's guide. And so I, I think a lot of parents may feel that they're inadequate, but they can do what he's doing. I mean, that's what's what a lot of students are going to get in the public school. So the, the benefit to the home environment is you have somebody who actually cares. Uh, and not to say public school teachers don't care. There are many, many, many public school teachers who do care about students. Uh, but but there's, uh, you know, as a system, there's going to be those uh, like, like this guy who just said it's a job, you know, and so uh, at least the your students are going to get the best of you and there's value in that. 
I love that answer. Thank you so much. That was my experience too. When they told me that I got the teacher's manual, I went, woohoo, I'm in. And I got to learn history all over again and review math. It's that makes it so much easier. Thank you for sharing that, Israel. All right, well, we'll come back around, but now let's go to Tina Griffin. We're so excited to have Tina with us. This is her first time here. Thank you so much, Tina, for joining. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Yay. So uh, the joys of homeschooling. I will tell you, I don't know what I was speaking on this thing, but you know, sometimes impromptu makes it extra fun. Um, homeschooling. <clears throat> I have not been homeschooled. I was in the public school. I have two younger brothers. We grew up in a farm in Wisconsin, um, became a believer at 16. But I was the one in public school that was trying to get Youth Alive started, which took me two years to get a Christian club on campus. Had I known my rights now, then it would have taken me about two hours to get that club started on campus. Um, but it took me two years. A lot of teens ended up coming to it. And back then it was drugs and, and sex and you know drinking, that kind of thing, not what we see today. Um, but I got that started shortly after I became a Christian. And um, and homeschooling happened because the last 20 years, after going to Hollywood and doing film and TV for a decade, I work with a lot of celebrities. I heard about the baby sacrifice. I heard about a lot of graphic stuff. So I don't know if you guys are all familiar with all that. So I don't want to give you bad nightmares. But I ingested a lot while working on set with the celebs I work with, with the, um, with the parties I went to. Um, with the runway modeling shows that I did, I just saw and heard a ton. I didn't participate in that stuff, um, but I saw stuff. And some stuff was too bad where I had to say, I don't care if I get fired, never work for you guys again, I gotta get out of here. Um, so that was my life in my 20s. Uh, but I, since I was a Christian, I had the Bible to and God to direct me uh, through that <laughs> wild times. But Speaking for 20 years on pop culture and media influence has caused me to get an inside scoop of today's educational system. And I knew there was a problem 15 years ago, but, and back then it was people once again, doing drugs, sex, all that. But then I saw the violent video games. I saw the um, cyber bullying, the bullying in class, the common core education system. Of course, we all know about Bill Gates and rewriting the history books and the impact it had on the students that were in the class. And the comments that I got from kids saying, I'm in an AP advanced course, Tina. I just heard your assembly and I'm, some girls were crying. I remember some students were crying because of the required reading that was filled with rape, uh, people being raped, women being raped and dismembered in AP advanced courses in our high schools. So due to that and many other things, I said, someday when I have kids, if I do, um, they are not going to be at all ever in a public school. And so I got married when I was 29. That was nine years into, eight years into my speaking. And I had four kids in four years shortly afterwards. And we took the homeschool route because of the devastation I saw on a daily basis when I go out and speak to kids in public schools telling me, get me out of public schools. Um, and my heart broke because you, like all you guys, you want to adopt them and take them home and give them a loving, caring environment. But um, now my whole mission is to help people see that we have a time to do the reset parenting button that with COVID, we have a chance now to say no more um, uh, common core curriculum and no more condom relay races for middle school students to get in class and no more with the disgusting apps that are used on uh, school campuses and what my kids are seeing on the school bus. Uh, no more to bullying in the hallways at schools and uh, an environment you can't learn in um, and getting God back in our education. So with what Ray Moore was talking about, I completely agree. This is a time for parents and I've been blowing up. Our ministry is blowing up. That's why I need an assistant yesterday again <laughs> um, is because we get hundreds of emails a day, messages a day. My text message has 400 unanswered texts of parents saying, um, now that we're homeschooling our kids, or now that they've been home for four months, we're seeing the public school curriculum on their iPads. What the heck, where have I been? And so it's given us a chance to say, yes, follow our app, get, you know, download our app, get our tips, um, homeschool your children, it's possible. We're running programs now on YouTube with Heidi St. John and some other people. Just because parents 
that thought they never homeschool were forced to do so and realize it's really not that bad. And the biggest thing I think it was over the years is parents not wanting to give up their free playtime, honestly, and have a free babysitter and have to deal with raising their own kids. I, I think that uh, a typical parent can do it. They just didn't want to do it. And um, now that they see what's happened to their kids as a result, they're trying to win back the time they lost, which is a great reason for us to keep pushing the message out there with homeschool as being a great option. And churches need to open their doors, not just for Sunday service, but for during the week when teachers who are sick of the crick and they're being forced to teach can teach the children in the churches. There are easy solutions with buildings that, that don't even have to be built and funding for 17 years doesn't have to come in. We have churches. Where are we in the 11th hour and 59th minute? Rapture is around the corner, not joking, or we're going to die for our faith around the corner. So we have to get these parents to realize and pastors to realize we need to pull our kids out, get them in a church related school or homeschool and get them a curriculum that's God based and get them fired up and ready for what's to come. Um, and that's about it. Wow. You are awesome, Tina. We are so excited to have you on this call. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Yes, no great, worries. Great information. And um, I hope that we continue to do a lot of work together because we're going to double team this. I think because of where you were going with this, I'm going to jump to Bishop Art Hodges for a moment because Bishop Art Hodges is on the board of the Salt and Light Council and on public school exit as one of our advisors as well. And so Bishop Art, um, let me go ahead and unmute you. Are you there? Uh, Bishop Art, can you? Uh... Yes, I'm here. Okay, well, I'd like for you to share with them what is your new path in answering all of these questions that Tina just brought up about the involvement of the church and what the church can do. Yeah, thank you very much. So uh, let me go back just really quickly. Let me go back, uh, what, 35 years ago? <laughs> I was a, a Southwest Regional Representative for Accelerated Christian Education and was instrumental in starting many, many schools in uh, churches, especially in California, uh, Southern, well, beyond Southern California, Southern California, Central California, and Northern California. Uh, so that goes way, way, way back. Uh, I've been pastoring now 36 years as senior pastor, and, and, I, and I oversee now uh, 235 pastors in Southern California as bishop. Uh, but the primary church I pastor, my mother church, South Bay Pentecostal Church in San Diego, has had a Christian school for more than 40 years now. And uh, we began ACE, we moved to a Becca for younger ages, and more recently we moved to um, a Becca for up through grade three <clears throat> and to uh, switched on Schoolhouse, which became Ignitia for, for the uh, older grades. So with the uh, pandemic and the shutdowns and all of that, towards the end of the school year, um, our school was forced to you know, go off campus back into homes. That was not a big problem because most of the students already we're utilizing online resources, uh, their textbooks, et cetera, et cetera. But what we're doing now, we are right now launching, I mean, we're literally in the middle of launching a brand new path. Uh, the name of our Christian school is called South Bay Christian Academy. And so we are about to launch America's Christian Academy, America's Christian Academy. And this is gonna be a nationwide, worldwide endeavor uh, that we will administrate here. But I mean, the sky is the limit. And so basically, it'll be a resource for both homeschoolers. If you need resources, we've got a complete Christian-based curriculum. Christianity, uh, the Bible, is in every subject. I mean, it's absolutely uh, Christian-based. Um, and, and so uh, we're launching that, America's Christian Academy. Um, and then it's also for those that want to get out of the public school. And, and maybe they can't fully, you know, homeschool, they don't have the resources, the time, the whatever, uh, we can come alongside and provide that, that avenue. And then it's also for those that are uh, maybe have been in, in Christian or private school and their schools are shut down, they don't know how they're addressing this. So we're excited about that. We'll keep you informed, Dram, and you can get it out to everybody in the network there, but uh, look for it. Uh, we're about to, well, about to go public with this, uh, America's Christian Academy. I wanted to share Bishop Art Hodges with everyone to let you know that the pastors are coming on board. So at publicschoolexit.com, 
under school options, we have a special section for any church that is ready to engage in being a homeschool co-op or a membership association or a variety of other things we have. So please use the resources there and we will be doing more specifically even for pastors and churches in the coming weeks so that you can understand how to how to make this transition it's not that hard and you don't have to necessarily become what bishop art hodges has already been for the last 30 years a physical school where you have to impact you know traffic statements for your local community uh, and all the rules and regulations that come along with being an actual school but you can do a variety of forms right from your church that's very exciting all right i would like to go now to max lyons max Okay, uh, well, uh, I just uh, give you a little bit of information on what we do here at FACE. Our, um, a lot of people are not familiar with us. It's sort of a, it's a small movement at this point, but um, we are advocating for uh, biblical, a, a education consists of three parts, a philosophy, a curriculum, and the methodology. The philosophy is why you do what you do. Curriculum is uh, what you use and the methodology is how you use it. So we are involved in all th three of those aspects, both uh, for education in the broadest sense of the word. So K through 12 for sure, but um, college, uh, in the home, in the church, uh, adult education we're involved in. And uh, basically we, we have curricular items um, that we can we can help you with, um, but we also, more importantly, that we advocate for a biblical uh, method of education. So the principal approach in short is a method that um, goes back to um, basically the, the, the Hebrew methods of education. Uh, so if you go back, you know, I mean, we've been doing education a long time, right? This is not something that's new. And actually the the best practices or the things that work the best in education are not new. They're not secretive. They're not something that we've invented, although we have a kind of a way that we've systemized, systematized it and helped people through it that way. But Tom's um, it's really advocating for biblical methods of education. So, for example, just a couple of things that uh, we help people uh, to implement is in studying, you know, history and government and economics, the, the humanities. We, uh, we advocate for going back to primary sources rather than using secondary sources. So rather than workbooks and textbooks, et cetera. Uh, and we do use some textbooks. So uh, we, we have students go back to the original writings and most of us recognize that's probably the richest way and the most pure way to study something anyway. Um, but we've kind of systematized it and enabled people to do that right from little children. Um, you know, using age appropriate, you know, age appropriate, appropriate material, but from little children all, all the way up through high school, you know, using primary sources. And then, uh, for instance, in, um, you know, Israel uh, mentioned logic and apologetics. Uh, you know, we advocate for thinking and reasoning and, and uh, testing, um, you know, writing compositions and writing essays instead of using, you uh, you know, what we refer to as Dewey's methods, you know, the methods of the progressives that came in the, you know, in the last century, you know, fill in the blank, multiple choice, matching, uh, true, false, et cetera. So it's just, you know, it's um, going deeper as Dran said, and uh, really going back to the, the old paths, going back to the biblical methods that again, have been around a long time. Classical education actually embodies a lot of this as well. Uh, okay. And uh, FACE yeah. helps individual homeschoolers with this. We help schools implement it. We're actually, in the, we're actually involved with helping start schools. We have a school planting package. Uh, uh, Bishop Hodges mentioned ACE. We've, we've actually have an ACE school at the moment that's transitioning from ACE program to principal approach after 55 years. So, um, 
we can we, we can help you. I encourage you to reach out to FACE if we can help you in with either your homeschooling or your Christian school, or maybe you want to get something going in your church. My wife and I years ago uh, started teaching in our, our Sunday school class in our church and implementing principal approach methodology there and writing a curriculum because this is this is not something just for K through 12. This is a this is a way of life. It's something for for all of us, no matter what our what our age or no matter what the setting that we're working in, we can all do biblical education. We all need to be doing biblical education because uh, that's what's going to get us out of this mess. And it's of course it's going to be for the long haul, right? We all I think we all know that it's not something we're going to turn around and fix overnight because it's taken us hundreds of years to get into this mess. And it's, you know, we pray for God to speed it up so it doesn't take hundreds of years. <laughs> but uh, it's going to take a shorter period of time if, if all of us uh, that recognize that there's a problem, you know, get in the trenches and work together. And, and uh, so again, I'm thankful to be part of the team. Uh, I'm thankful to be part of CEI, Christian Education Initiative, 22 organizations working together all for the cause of biblical worldview education. Thank you so much, Max. Uh, and boy, it would be amazing if Bishop Art Hodges and you had an opportunity to get together. And I love what you did, Max, is that you put on tours of your school and you give uh, teachers and pastors a broad overview of the type of education. I think this is really the cream, creme de la creme of of education. That's my personal opinion. Uh, and I think really everything you do is so amazing. And I'm grateful for the work that you do and for Ray introducing us. So thank you. Thank you, Dran. Okay, now, Gail Levin, do you want to make an announcement? And I'm going to also at the same time share my screen. So Gail Levin. Yeah, hi, everybody. Um, okay, so on our Facebook page, we have a um, uh, a post here and you can share your homeschool stories. So it says, did you homeschool? What were or are the results? Share it here. And so we hope that if you have something that you want everybody to know, go ahead and use this page. As well, there is a share button on the, on the um, Facebook post as well. So you can share it with other people through your own Facebook page or through your own organizations. Thank you, Dran. Thank you so much. And also you can see that we are live on Facebook. And if you're looking at my little mouse there, you can see it going around as we're talking. So I'm going to stop the share, but you can also watch yourself on Facebook as you're speaking. Let me stop the share. Thank you so much, Gail. I also wanted to thank Gail Levin and Terry Barnes who are part of the Salt and Light Council and uh, help to make sure that this goes smoothly and we're just so grateful. Okay, and now let's go just real briefly to Donna Train for your uh, homeschooling experience, Donna. Yes, thank you, Dan. I just want to encourage parents that are struggling possibly with the idea of homeschooling and both of you work God orchestrated an amazing series of events to convince myself, especially my husband wasn't as involved um, with the ability to be able to homeschool. I had been a volunteer at my son's public school for uh, from kindergarten through fifth grade is when God brought together these events. I had actually been working at full time as a hairdresser and the um, administration of the school asked that I would possibly consider being the volunteer coordinator for the school. And I, of course, didn't think I had time, but I took it to the Lord and said, Lord, if you want me to have that job, if you want me to be there, have me shine in the interview. And if it's not your will, have me stink. And so I interviewed for the job. 20 minutes after the interview, they called and offered me the job. And as some of you may be aware, public school will say how many hours something is involved. Um, I, it was supposed to be a 20 hour a week job. It was more like 30. 
And while I was working in that position, San Diego City Schools went through one of its worst teacher strikes. And because I was staff, I was put in a classroom, my son's classroom, 34 fourth and fifth graders. I can't say it was great. I didn't do a fabulous job. Of course, the kids were pretty upset seeing their teachers standing at the picket lines, but we survived it and they actually learned a few things. And it was at that point that God was able to convince me that not only did I have the time, I had the ability. And we started with the Becca the first year. The hardest part about that was just planning out my lesson plan. Uh, hours just to try and make sure we got through the whole book. The second year I discovered Alpha Omega switched on schoolhouse, a click of the computer button and the whole lesson plan was laid out for me. We did do an umbrella school, um, homeschooling, where we had class days that we co-opt with other parents. And my son was able to take um, a drafting class from an architect. I could have probably studied up on that, but um, he, had, he was blessed with the opportunity to learn from a specialist. So umbrella schools, PSPs are a wonderful way to go if you can afford it, but you don't have to have a lot of money to homeschool and you really don't have to have as much time as you think you do. Um, the two hours that we would struggle every night to get the homework done, my son's ADHD with Tourette's, it was and it, just agonizing, yet two hours a day schooling with him fresh, we could get through all of the studies. So it's really not as difficult as you might think. It doesn't have to be five hours, six hours a day. And that relationship that you're establishing with your kids is priceless. I just want Thank to encourage you. y'all to try it. Thank you, Donna, so much. All right, so we're getting close to the, the hours. I want to leave room. Alex Newman has finally joined us. Alex, you were going to tell us about all your travels around the world as a family and how you taught geology and biology and you bring your family with you and you're always teaching. Thank you, Alex. Uh, thank you, Dran. And I'm sorry, I was a little bit late, guys. Uh, the TV interview went over. My apologies. I hate to be late for anything. And you guys are awesome. Thank you for being here. Uh, so we were talking about parent testimonials uh, before the call and well, what can you offer, Alex? Well, hey, I'm a parent and we homeschool our children. Uh, and we have had more fun than I could possibly describe in words doing our homeschooling. Um, not by choice, but we've been traveling around the world um, my entire life. And that's continued even uh, with my children, mostly for work, but partly because my wife is from overseas. So we have to go back to her country, but then visa requirements. We can only stay there three months and then we've got to go on road trips. But uh, we've been able to, to do this and to homeschool while doing it uh, because of the freedom that homeschooling offers. Uh, and, and I sound like it's, you know, it's a bad thing, but it's not. It's been so much fun. And I'll give you some examples. Um, last year, we did a tour across the entire United States. I was on a speaking tour speaking about the need to rescue our children. And so we bought a 17-foot trailer and I loaded up my wife and, and our four kids. We've got one more on the way. And we just traveled across the entire country for four months. And we homeschooled every step of the way. And All right, boys, let's go to Philadelphia. We're going to visit Independence Hall. We're going to learn about our founding fathers. We're going to go to um, you know, the, the Grand Canyon and we're going to learn about geology and what God did with the floods. I mean, every second of it was a homeschool experience. And, it, you know, we probably crammed 20 years worth of government school into a period of four months. And we did it while having a blast. Uh, the year before that, we toured, uh, I think, 25 countries in Eastern Europe. Uh, we drove from Sweden down through Ukraine and Poland and Hungary, uh, all the way into the Balkans, former Yugoslavia, Albania, down to Greece, over to Malta, Italy. It was just phenomenal. And it was mostly for me to work and to avoid, uh, you know, getting in trouble with the Swedish government. They only let us stay there for three months at a time unless we want to hand over our children for mandatory indoctrination and a lot of my, uh, my income. So we did that and, and I interviewed people and, you know, we, we did homeschooling all along. So, we, you know, we learned about European history and we learned about what wars. And so we went to uh, Sarajevo and learned about Archduke uh, Ferdinand and, and his killing, and, uh, you know, we, to Vienna and, and the Austro-Hungarian Empire. I mean, it's just a never ending. The world is your oyster. I know it's so cliche, but when you're homeschooling, 
the world is really your oyster. And in this age of coronavirus, when all our jobs are there, hey, you, you work from home, you know, we're going to save money on the office building or whatever. It's a perfect time for you to get your children out of the system uh, and enjoy freedom and enjoy your children. And it's so it's just, uh, you know, brief testimony. I, I can't explain how much fun it's been. My wife would echo that and my children too, you know, my oldest, oh man, I'm not going to see my friends for a while, but you should have seen the smile on his face. You know, this, you're going to see all this amazing stuff. And, um, you know, it's, it's just amazing. And it's only because we were homeschooling that it was possible. And uh, so, you know, I just, I can't recommend it highly enough. I, I think it's, like I said, it's the second best decision ever made in my life with the first one being to, to put all my faith and trust in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Second best decision, uh, homeschooling our children. It's, it's just been the, the most amazing blessing. Uh, and we should figure that it'd be a blessing, right? If God tells you that's how you're supposed to do it, and he does, you, you should teach your children when you wake up in the morning, when you're eating, when you're walking by the way, when you're going to sleep, uh, there's no time to hand them over to Caesar. So when we obey what the Lord has called us to, to do uh amazing things happen god blesses that and it's amazing so i'll leave it at that thank you dran thank you all for listening i want to be one of your kids <laughs> <laughs> i want to travel all over the world oh it sounds like so much fun and that's what it's all about folks is having great fun with your kids and enjoying your time with them because it's so precious and and as someone said uh they're on loan to you for a very short period of time uh, God, that's amazing. Love it. Thank you so much, Alex. Very encouraging. All right. Now I'm going to turn to Diane Davis and I'm going to do a share screen. And Diane, pretty much all you're going to do is announce your upcoming seminar. Okay. So we, on Saturday, um, Dr. Jean Vishnevsky, Pastor Randy Davis, and our um, board, uh, CEO of Alathea Christian College will be doing the One Room School. And we are going to be doing, I've been praying and asking the Lord to lead. And so I will be doing a seminar on the seven biblical principles of the principal approach as Max Lyons. And it's going to be um, from an aspect of how do you teach your children or teach a classroom? How do you manage a classroom that is biblically based? And then we'll be doing many other things. You can see Dran the circle down. Uh, get on, it's free. Please register to um, be on the Zoom call. It's two hours on Saturday. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. And I'm just showing you here on the website, there's multiple ways to get in to register, register for it, either here at the bottom on the homepage or as you're watching the banner scroll around, these are our ask. There it is. One room school. Okay. You, so maybe, oh, thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Well, we're uh, pretty close. To, we are pretty close to the end of the hour, but I want to give some of our special guests and we have three brand new ones with us today here on the phone, pretty much the uh, final word. And I'm so excited about them sharing their experiences. And I'd like to first go to Israel Wayne. Then we're going to go to Tina Griffin and then to Max Lyons. There are three special guests for today. So Israel, um, you have, we have about five minutes left. So uh, for all three of you, so uh, if you could go ahead and encourage the parents. Sure. I mentioned in the uh, Zoom chat, if you want to go there for a direct link, um, that I have a book that's called Answers for Homeschooling, the top 25 questions critics ask. And it really does deal with all the questions. Um, what about socialization? How do you choose a curriculum? What about the legal aspects? What about being salt and light in the public schools? Am I qualified to do this? What about high school? What about sports? What about public school at home programs? I, I answer all, of, every conceivable question is basically answered in this book. And I just got permission from the publisher to make the PDF of this available for free exclusively on my website. So if you just follow the link that's in the, the group chat, you can go there and snag a free PDF this week only. So just run over there and grab it. But I think that'll be a great encouragement to you to help you, especially if you're new. Um, if you've been homeschooling for a little bit longer and you want something that's a little more challenging, um, this book is called uh, Education, Does God Have an Opinion? And it is a really thorough a uh, biblical philosophy of education book that talks about how to teach every academic subject from a specifically biblical perspective. So how do you teach math or language arts or history or science or geography from a biblical worldview? 
uh, and then also just developing a biblical framework for what does God say about education? What does the Bible teach about education? A very comprehensive book. Uh, this is for sale at my website. So my website's familyrenewal.org. We would love to have you join us there and also connect with us on social media. You can just look me up, Israel Wayne. I'm on every, every social media platform there is. So look up Family Renewal, which is my ministry, or Israel Wayne. If you have any questions for me directly, uh, Facebook's probably the best way to private message me. Uh, if you do that, if you just want to email me or something, you can go to our website, familyrenewal.org, and send us a note from there. I'm grateful to be here. This is so much fun. And, and of course, you know, some of my favorite people in the world are also on here. So this is a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. I enjoy it too. Israel, let me ask you a question. If there was a parent uh, or, a, uh, or a pastor who needed your expertise, can they, in a way, hire you? I mean, I'm sure hire you. And then you would be available to guide them through the process. Absolutely. Because We'd love I to do that. that I do too. I think that's what we need a lot is some, you know, babying through the process and people, experts like you, amazing. Max Lyons, amazing. Alex Newman, amazing. So I think for all of you out there, even though all the resources on publicschoolexit.com are free and you can puzzle it out yourself, you know, you could pop for a little money and get an expert and just have them baby you through the whole thing. That's something that I would do. <laughs> so thank you so much for that. Israel. Tina Griffin. Tina, are you there? Did I'm you right here. Sorry, I forgot that I muted myself. I'm not used to doing that. <laughs> um, I have a quick question. There's a share screen on the bottom. I hit that, right? I don't want to mess up something tech wise for you guys. Will you be able to see my screen if I hit that? I uh, no, because I'm the only one with the ability, but if you can tell me where to go and then you can just tell me what to click on, I'll do it. Oh yeah. Perfect. Well, can I just put it in the chat feature really quick? Yeah. Put it in there. Sure. Okay. Here's one link I want to share with the parents. And cause I was like, I don't do something illegal here. And then there's a, you, you don't get a hold of it. I think that's it. I hope. Okay. Let me. Yes. Praise the Lord. Cause I do a lot of research on bad stuff and I don't want something bad to fly up on the screen. Okay. <laughs> so do you want me to put this link up on the screen? Yes, that'd be perfect. That one and I have one more, but we'll talk oh, about wait. this first quick. Hold on. Control C. Yep. Control V. It should pull up on there for you. There we go. And if you want to, you can stay on this for two seconds and then we can go down a little bit. Um, but this is our brand new app. We just launched it two weeks ago for parents tuning in. Now the kids are typically in classroom for 40 hours, but they're watching media for 70. And so uh, they really are impacted by what they're doing on Snapchat. We got TikTok with the communist uh, agenda with them gathering all our personal info. Um, we've got a lot of info like the, tro the giggling uh, poppy troll doll that just hit and got millions of views from one mom with uh, how gross that doll was with uh, body parts in the bottom that you touch and it makes uh, disgusting noises, sexual noises. This is hitting five, six, seven year old kids. So besides just the education aspect we got from the school system, we got the education aspect coming from pop culture. So if you download our app and you can scroll down a little bit more there. Uh, it's free. It's counterculture mom app. It's free. We do have a premium section for three bucks a month, but that just helps cover the 15 team of writers that we have that pump out the content. Um, and that way you guys know ahead of time what is trying to influence your kids for the negative and get tons of positive entertainment options we have as well. On the bottom, you can also sign up on that link, which is in the comment section. It's also a free parent media guide. We have thousands of entertainment uh, options in there that are clean. So if you have to throw a load of laundry in, your kids are watching uh, a certain program on Pure Flakes, you know you're going to be just fine uh, for 20, 30 minutes or if you're cooking a meal. So um, we have that free media guide that has positive comedians in it. It has uh, positive video games, a whole list of video games, um, series, TV series that are great. Um, we got apps that are safe, but then also help, helpful tip lines, like if uh, someone's suicidal, depressed, all that kind of stuff. We have that in there as well. The other link I was going to send you, and we can, uh, I'll probably, have, we'll probably have to come out of that one in order to go to the next one, um, is this ordeal that we have set up for parents right here this summer. Copy, and here it is. 
and you can copy that. Um, this is our store special that we have going on right now. And it's not all about selling product, but if you're asking what's going to help you guys and you want to know more info, after 20 years of speaking out about pop culture, the parent chat book, my friend Matt McKee, Why Re Rewrite Something That's Fantastic, that book is phenomenal talking about technology. What do you allow in your home? When are your kids ready for it? Um, what are some great guidelines when you have tech in the home as far as not bringing the iPhone to the table, um, tablet uh, time, downtime at bedtime, how to set up all your tech gadgets in your home where each kid, depending on how old they are, have different guidelines. You can set that up. All that is discussed. I love it in parent chat. And then of course the top product up there that we have is a summer survival pack. That one's been our special throughout the summer. People are getting that one and they love it. There's $110 worth of stuff in there for 69 bucks. We have Bible trading cards. Uh, my Counterculture Mom podcast, we just had uh, Teresa on there who created the animal trading card. So if kids are into um, Pokemon cards, which are not of God, they can grab onto the animal Bible trading cards and they're phenomenal. You learn scripture, you can trade cards with our kids. Um, in fact, Alex, I think you just grabbed one for your kid last weekend when I saw you speaking at that event. Um, and then we have the CD uh, series of four hours of content of what I learned firsthand working behind the scenes in Hollywood. Teens have been texting me saying, I never listen to tracks and not video. I checked it out. I love it. And they're, it's helping them realize that what their parents have been telling them for 10, 15 years is exactly what the case is. In fact, sometimes worse, but it helps them put the pieces together of who owns Hollywood, what their agenda is, why they're lying to teens, why they want to use their body as income for like Planned Parenthood and pushing the sex agenda. But the kids love it because it helps them say, I don't want to be lied to any longer. And kids are being on fire, being the witness God created them to be at 14, 15, 16 years old because they have the dirt to then share with their friends instead of saying, come to church, it's great. Well, now we don't have that option. Um, but it's scripture based um, that is backed up with evidence that I've seen firsthand in Hollywood. <clears throat> the last thing on there is the rock and roll DVD three hour um, DVD series. It's phenomenal. That DVD changed my life when I was 20, the older version, they have an updated version now there. And it caused me to see who celebrities are primarily working for, which is Satan and his agenda. But when teens watch that, their lives are changed. They literally make better, wiser choices in entertainment with what they watch because they don't want to be living and believing and supporting a lie. So those are some things that we, that a lot of parents love and give us great feedback on. But I'm here, counterculturemom.com. We got the Counterculture Mom app. You definitely want to download the app. It's great. And, um, <clears throat> and uh, it come, I think if you go... Yeah, you could probably come out of the screen. Now I can show them. That's the website. You can download the app and you can also download the free parent media guide there. But um, the resources we have on there are far and wide. And I would say get the app over social media because I'm constantly in Facebook jail. Like I just got out and I'm probably going back in within days. So a lot of censorship happening here because the enemy wants to shut us up. But uh, yeah, and check out the podcast. So if I can help you in any way, please message me through Facebook. I will see it and get back to you. Thank you so much, Tina. That was amazing. Yes. Thank you for doing all that for all the moms out there. Uh, we'll keep you busy as much as we can, for sure. Sounds good. <laughs> all right. And um, let's see, Max Lyons. Max, are you still there? Max, Max, Max. All right, well, <clears throat> we are actually five minutes over and I just wanna give this time to our speakers. Uh, one last word before we jump off the phone. Any one of our speakers. I would just say to parents who are on the fence about this, that no one loves your children more than you do. No one knows them better than you. And you get to have a window of opportunity for influence. You know, influence is largely determined by time. Um, it's a bit of an overgeneralization, but for the most part, whoever spends the most time with your children will have the most influence. And for most parents, that's not them by default because they have given their children over to the media, they've given their children over to the schools, they've given their children over to friends and sports teams and peer groups and all of that. And they cannot be the most influential person in their child's life because they don't have access to them. Uh, they just don't have enough time. 
but you have an opportunity to invest yourself in your child's life. And you know, I have never heard later in life, you know, parents saying, I just wish I would have spent less time with my kids. I mean, nobody says that, but I've heard thousands and thousands of parents with regret saying, I just wish I would have spent more time with my kids. So this is um, a decision that obviously is going to cause some life change. It'll cause you to have to reorient uh, and, and realign some things and change some priorities. But I just don't think you will ever regret giving your child the best of yourself. And um, God doesn't call us to do something and then fail to equip us. So it's not all about you and what you're capable of doing. It's about you finding a new reliance on God in a way that you haven't before and him doing great things through you. And uh, so I just strongly encourage you. I, I think sometimes we know the right thing to do and we just talk ourselves out of it and we give a hundred excuses of why it's not practical and why we can't afford it and why we don't have enough time and so on. And I think this is just one of those things that's too important to talk ourselves out of it. I, I think uh, our children need us and um, I don't think you'll ever regret it. Thank you so much, Israel. That was great. Anyone I'll else? Just, I'll just say, uh, quick little snippet, the time factor for me, I'm like, how am I going to save America and America's kids if I'm schooling my own? But God's like, seriously, you're going to put your kids in the altar for the sake of the mission I gave you. You have to live out what you're actually preaching. I'm like, thanks for the reminder every, every week. So if you think you're short on time and can't fit it all in, what we've done with our kids, I homeschool, I got four kids, 11, nine, eight, and seven. And um, I'm surprised to remember that most of the time I forget how many kids I have or how old they are. And I don't have 10 kids. I don't know how you guys do it. Um, as I get them busy doing the stuff that I would typically be doing, if I'm folding the laundry and it usually takes me two hours and I have, I do two laundry days a month. That's it. People think I'm nuts. I just bought more clean underwear and I just wash the clothes twice a month. That way my mind is focused just on that, those days of laundry and I get the kids involved. That's our give back day to the home. And then we order groceries together or we'll, well, I'll teach them about the math of how to save, which one's cheaper per ounce. And we do the actual um, duties that I would typically just be stuck doing thing. How am I cram all this in? I get the four kids busy doing it. And then I'm like a military sergeant in the home. I have a cleaning chart in the wall. I give each kids every single day, one bigger task every day. They have the same tasks and then one bigger task every day and they all tackle it. And then we have a little money system. I think it's called green card where, um, we give them an allowance every single month and they have to give some to a missionary. They've got to give some back to the church and they can spend some and save some. And so that is like a weekly little thing where they get to earn the money that they're doing. They're not just doing the chores for free. Some of them they are, but the harder jobs they're not. Um, but then we save money too, because our lawn guy typically would be 80 bucks. We said goodbye to him and we give our son $10. So we save money and our son gets to earn 10 bucks. So, the jobs that you do by yourself, figure out a way to divide them up among all your kids. And that way they're learning how to actually run their own home someday as well uh, with clean laundry, a nice freshly cut lawn and dinner on the table. I love all those stories. You reminded me too. I, I bought a, a fake checkbook, a little uh, you know, a child's checkbook, and I put $500 in it. And I told them you have $500 to spend through the entire year. And that's for birthday gifts, for grandparent gifts, for parents gifts. And uh, you have to keep the tabulation, you have to know how much money you have. And it's also for tithing to the church. It's also I got both of my kids right away to shop sales. <laughs> <laughs> they were always saving money. And then what we did is we also taught them investment. So they also had with this checkbook, the ability to invest. And then I took them and showed them about how to buy stocks and bonds. And then we helped them do that. That is so hilarious. It's, we hilarious. Do stocks too. it's stocks too with our 11 year old. He loves it. Look at how much money I made. I'm like, don't look this fall. <laughs> I love it. I would actually love it if all of you would send us pictures of your different chore charts and charts that you had. I actually kept my chart and it's outside of the garage somewhere. I'd love to pull that out, take a picture of it and show you what we did. But we had chore charts they did Monday through, through, you know, through uh, Saturday, everything they were supposed to do during the day. And if they didn't do it, we had another box where they had a job they had to do around the house. And they helped me write out the jobs, sweep the patio, uh, clean the pool, uh, you know, wash the dog. It was a whole pile of them. And they hated when they had to, and they would, they would close their eyes and they'd swirl it around and they'd have to pick out uh, their 
punishment for not doing just their regular jobs and regular jobs you don't reward them for right. because yeah. then you're teaching your kids that you know a reward based system no if you don't do your job you take something away right. or you give them a punishment and that's actually teaching them to honor responsibilities as a child within the family at least that's what we did so all parents get to make up these fun little projects with their families i think it's greatly creative and an enjoyment but what we did is if a kid didn't do their chore, another kid could do it and they would get their allowance. So we had competition. I'm, I'm making sure I get my stuff done because you're not taking my cash. So <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Money talks. All right. That's so awesome, Dina. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, Alex Newman or Ray Moore, would you like to share one last word? I would just tell people, you know, echo everything that Israel said and that Tina said, you know, there, there's no better decision other than your salvation that uh, that you could possibly make. Your children uh, are one of your highest duties while you're here on this earth. God gave you clear instructions. Go read Israel's book. Um, I read Israel's book. I, I reviewed it. It was incredible. It, it really uh, just clarified my thinking on this. I already kind of had a sense of that from my own reading of scripture, but when he puts it all together in one book, it's undeniable. Go read the book and you'll see that God has actually called you to do this. It's not like one of those things where you have liberty, like, oh, maybe I could put my kids in Caesar's brainwash camps or I could homeschool. It, it doesn't work that way. So uh, you must do it, guys. You just must do it. And you got to share the word with other people. You got to tell, tell your friends, tell your pastor. Uh, we've got to get the word out. Our children are absolutely precious to let the world poison their minds uh, is, is unconscionable. We've got to stop it. So do the right thing, folks. Thank you and God bless. Thank you so much, Alex. And we are over our time. So we're going to go ahead and close it up now. But again, please send us pictures. Also, as Gail mentioned, uh, please post your, um, your experiences on the uh, public school exit uh, Facebook page. We're so grateful for all of you joining us. Ray Moore, are you still with us? All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. Would you like to close us out in prayer? <clears throat> yes. <clears throat> we thank you, God, that you've called us uh, through your marvelous gospel and that we can experience forgiveness of sin and eternal life and hope in the next world. We thank you've given us kingdom projects to do now. Probably the most important one is being a parent and, and maintaining a good marriage. So we pray you'd help us to be faithful in that and help us to have a legacy to rebuild the family, the church, and the nation through Christian education and homeschooling. Thank you for all these people, Lord, these ministries that you've raised up. It's quite amazing to see it. We ask you to bless each one of them. We pray again your special blessing on Dran, her staff, a public school exit, and calls us to go forward in your work and with great power, encouragement, and hope. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Thank you all. God bless you. I'm going to go ahead and close Facebook. Thank amen. You Facebook. Thank you, Facebook. Thanks, Terry. You bet.